Hey, motion designers. Today, we're going to talk about how to transform any visual with grunge overlays and effects. Let's get started. Hey, motion designers. My name is Cameron with Motion Science. And as I said, today, we're talking about how to transform any visual into a much more tactile and organic looking visual by using grunge overlays and some simple effects. And I can't wait to show you what I'm talking about. But before we dive in, I want to tell you very quickly, I have a free gift for you over at motionscience.tv slash guide. It's my complete guide to mastering organic motion design with After Effects. And it is a guide full of tips, tricks, and techniques that will transform your digital looking renders into organic tactile renders like you see in my work. A lot of times I see motion designers spit out renders from After Effects and they just look very digital. But with these techniques, I'm going to teach you in this guide you're going to create more organic looking motion design. Just go to motionscience.tv slash guide. Download the PDF. It's absolutely free. You will not regret it. Okay, so let's jump into how to create better visuals by adding some simple grunge overlays and effects. Let's jump into After Effects. All right, to start things off, I've got this visual render here. And this is something I downloaded off of artgrid.io. It's some stock footage. It looks pretty interesting to begin with. It's like this kind of dreamy nebula with some really interesting colors, but we can make it way more interesting, way more in the motion science style by the steps I'm gonna show you here. So let's start by going to effect and we're gonna go up to color correction, hue and saturation. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop the master saturation by about 30. And the reason I'm doing this is because typically with grunge type aesthetics, uh, for the most part, you don't see really saturated visuals. At least I don't. Um, doesn't mean you can't have saturated visuals, but for this example, I want it a little bit less saturated. Uh, and then we're gonna type in up here under effects and presets, we're gonna type in mirror. Let's find that, let's double click it to add. And this is a 4K uh, footage. So let's go ahead and center up the, the re reflection center to 1920 by 1080. And let's go ahead and reverse to 180 degrees. So it's upside down like that. And that's looking pretty cool already. You can see here. And we could just stick with that, but let's take it a step further. Let's go back to effects and presets and type in CC Kaleida. And we'll double click that and we're gonna change it to unfold. I think that might work. Let's go ahead and scale this footage up. We're gonna go all the way to 400%, uh, something like that. And let's move the center point here. So it's kind of offset. It's, I moved it down. And if we preview this, uh, it's already looking kind of interesting, right? It's Now it does have that kind of mirror kaleidoscope effect, which I see sometimes, but it looks pretty dope uh, right here. So let's add one more effect and this is, you can add, there's a lot of different chromatic aberration effects out there. Uh, quick chromatic aberration two by plug-in everything, or actually it's aberration three now. This is a free plug-in, it's plug-in everything. If you wanna download it, go for it. Uh, I like it, uh, but if I'm going for my all-time favorite, I'm gonna go to uh, Sapphire Distort, and I'm gonna go to Warp Chroma. And here we are, and I like to use uh, this chromatic aberration subtle, so I'll click the preset for it. And it's again, it's a very subtle effect. So you can see with and without very, very subtle chromatic aberration. A lot of times I see motion designers overdo it on this side. Uh, so that's that's all it is pretty simple, right? So got that. And there's how it's looking with our effects. And it's, it's like I said, it's looking pretty cool. I like it I like that part a lot right in here. That's really cool. So we're going to jump back here to around 103. And let's add some type here. And we're gonna make this like it's a, let's say it's a visual for, for a concert, right? For an artist that's performing on stage. We see it all the time. So I'm gonna put like a lyric up here and I'm not gonna use that typeface. Let's try this one, it's kind of interesting. And I actually picked this color ahead of time. It's kind of like pinkish color, which I like a lot. Uh, so let's go ahead and drop this down in size. Move it over in here. And we're gonna open up the text here. And we're gonna click here on source text and we're gonna move down about four frames. And I found that I also liked this 
typeface a lot. That's really cool. And we'll move down further and we're gonna use this Suicide Squad font. And then we'll go two frames forward and we'll go back to the stamp or font typeface. And we're gonna hit option bracket and option in bracket so that the type just kind of sits here, you know, just like this. So you can see, all right, it's pretty basic at this point. We'll go ahead and hit in here so we can just preview this section in here. And let's make this a lot bigger. Maybe something like that. And then we're gonna hit P for position and we're gonna alter option click uh, and do a wiggle expression to make this wiggle around. So wiggle parentheses, Let's do six, 300. Let's just see what this looks like. And let's make it a little bit more steppy, right? It's like way too smooth. So let's go to effect and we'll go down to time and we'll go to posterize time. And let's turn this down. Yeah, now it's a lot steppier. It's looking pretty cool. Now it's way too crystal clear. So we're gonna go up here and add some blur to the type. And we'll just add like a three pixel blur, like so. And let's add some displacement mapping as well. Effect, distort, and displacement map. And we'll come back to this one because we're gonna have some of the, the grunge textures affect this and make it look a little bit more interesting. So we'll definitely come back uh, to the displacement map. But for now, this is how it looks. And let's duplicate this and take it further down the timeline and then we'll duplicate it again and bring it here in the middle. And let's just change this to, because we did set keyframes, we need to update each keyframe here. So remember us, uh, let's say who we were. And we'll go here, who we were. And oh, this is a little bit tedious here, but who we were. And then I think we're good now. Yeah. And I also want to increase the size. So let's go ahead and hit S for scale. I just want this type to be a lot bigger. So if same here, we'll go scale, we'll scale this up. And we'll go down here to the end and we'll also scale this one up. And let's also kind of offset the position, maybe bring it up here. And for this one, you know, we'll just hit P for position and we'll maybe drag it over here, up in here. So then if I preview this, it's not super important that I can read everything um, because it, remember again, like this is a tour visual, so it's up on screen. It's probably a super popular song that people already know the lyrics for. And this is like maybe the song title or something like that. Uh, so that works for me. Okay, so let's start bringing in some interesting textures here. So I'm gonna go into my assets and I've got a lot of footage here. Um, this is just because I was playing around with different ideas. Uh, you know, it, it never comes just immediately when I'm working on this stuff. There's usually some some trial and error and things like that. We're gonna go with composite 14 right here. Again, this is from uh, the Motion Science Texture Pack. Uh, if you haven't checked them out, definitely do. They're really awesome. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go to Effect Channel Invert. So we've got black type on white, and we're gonna change the mode to something like a soft light, just like that. Looking pretty cool. And we're gonna scale this up to 300%. Again, looking super pixelated, but that's you know part of the, the aesthetic I'm going for here. And we're gonna go to Effect Color Correction CC Toner, which is a great coloring effect that I like to use a lot. And keep it on Tritone. And I found that I really like this kind of purple color here. And it just kind of really blends in or works nicely with the background footage we already have. Uh, so you can see how this is really starting to come together now. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hit Command D to duplicate this, and we're gonna replace this composite with a background, which background 33 I found that I really liked. And we're gonna set this to overlay, and we're gonna scale it down small, maybe something like 65. And this one, this is you know how it's looking, right? So if we play this back, it's pretty interesting. 
Um, but what I'm seeing right off the top is like these, the textures in here are way too crisp for me. So I'm gonna go to effect and we're gonna go to blur and sharpen and we're gonna do fast box blur, maybe like a four, yeah, it might be too much, maybe a three. Then we're gonna go to effect blur and sharpen uh, directional blur. And let's actually turn up this one and then let's also increase this one a lot. Yeah, so now it's, you know, it's just got this, it's there, but it's a little, you know, hazier, for lack of a better term, uh, just softer. It's a really nice grunge texture. And I duplicated it because I wanted to use the same inverts and the same uh, CC toner effects. We've got that there. And then we're going to duplicate this background and we're gonna go to background 18, which I found I really liked. And for this, we're going to turn off directional blur and fast box blur. We're also going to scale this one down to about 51. So this just adds some grittiness over the top of everything, right? These kind of speckled grit textures, which look really nice. And let's go ahead and preview this and see how it looks. And there's our preview. And it's looking pretty cool, right? It's like completely changed the visual, the original visual. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to go back to remember how we had a displacement map we added here. I want to go back to that displacement map and I want to set it to composite 14. And 50 seems to work just nice. We'll change this one to composite 14 as well. So you can see it just really grunges up that type. Yeah, let's go back to this one, change it to composite 14 as well. And I think I'm, this one, I might drop the position down a little bit. Maybe even the scale, something like that. And if we preview that, now remember this is half res again, um, but just adding that displacement map to that type uh, really made it even much more interesting as well. And at this point, I could call it good because I do like what I'm seeing here. This would be an awesome like tour visual uh, up on stage, you know, behind a band or something like that. It'd be really cool. Uh, but we could take it even one step further and uh, use my favorite plugin right now, which I talked about in a previous video. And that's from Dehancer. Um, and I absolutely love it. So let's go here to layer, new adjustment layer. And we'll call this effects and we're going to go down to effects film emulation dehancer pro and a lot of times what happens is if, if i find a really awesome plugin um, i will use it a lot for a while because it just kind of blows my mind and that's what this plugin has done so um, i'm going to go to the uh, film and i'm just going to change just a couple things here we're going to go down to and I really liked this one a lot. And I'm just going to go to Halation, enable that, and go to Bloom and enable that. And that's literally all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna change this to full res and let's preview it and see how it looks. So there we go. We went from this to this by just adding some simple grunge overlays, some very simple effects in After Effects, and that is proof that you can take any visual and really expand on it and, and make it look better. And that's what I love to do. I love to, to take a, a simple visual and add an organic and tactile feel to it and make it look even cooler uh, in the motion science style. And that's exactly what you get if you go download my free PDF guide over at motionscience.tv slash guide. Uh, it's chock full of tips, tricks, and techniques just like this. Uh, to help your motion design look more tactile, more organic. So definitely go check it out. It's my free gift to you. Uh, as always, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.